What up, gang? It's your boy Zop back with another banger. Hey, today we hit this whiteboard. You know what time it is. Punish square time, man. We need motion in these YouTube educational streets, man. So we got to get the people what they need to help them select more efficiently. Now, with a punish square, we can kind of determine the probability of the genetic outcross. So without further ado, man, let's get right into it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, you heard me? Yeah, you know it. Turn up the leaf blower in the long boy. Oh, he ain't smoke the sour. Should've been a hippie, should've been a shower. Bread with no dread, black cock, oh yeah. Another thing, don't forget to join the Discord. All right, gang. So today, we on the whiteboard, and as you see, we got the Hardy and Weinberg equilibrium status sitting up top. That's the next level. It's time to combine what we learned in the previous videos darwin's natural selection right and mendel's laws of inheritance and we're going to bring the two together we're going to merge it what happens when you bring those two together when you do that you start to be able to predict and understand populations on a much more intricate level and that we consider the hardy and weinberg equilibrium status which reads here p squared plus 2pq plus q squared always equals one no matter what and don't worry about it we'll get into that next but for now we gotta understand the pun and square so let's get into it All right, Punnett squares, right? They measure probability of genetic cross. All right, Punnett squares measure the probability of a genetic cross. It's that simple. Um, it's how we are going to kind of determine. So don't get it twisted. It's not what will be next. It's what could be next, right? It's helping us to get uh, a, a probability. So when it comes to a basic pun and square, we're thinking a mono hybrid cross. It's just real simple, four squares, right? Once we get into more intricate, more, you know, then we're talking about die hybrids, right? Um, which is not no longer a four square is 16 boxes now so so keep that in mind let's understand the basic mono hybrid and then we can eventually move on to the die hybrid all right let's get uh, an example up on the board we're going to use a short and a tall gorilla right um let's say short was big g little g times Tall, which was little g, little g. All right, cool. So let me zoom in for y'all. All right, we got the short gorilla, which is heterozygous, big G, little g. And then we got a tall gorilla, which is homozygous, recessive, uh, little g, little g. So the short gorilla is has a dominant allele for, for short uh, and it's heterozygous and then the tall is just homozygous for the recessive um, tall gene which is little g little g now let's take a basic four square right we go back up a little bit again let's take our basic four square right That's our punish square. So we're gonna take big G, little G, little G, little G. So we got our two parents right there. We got our two parents. So we'll call the, the, the top one the mom, who's short, dominant, heterozygous, big G, little G for short. And then the dad, 
which is uh, homozygous recessive for the tall gene. And we're going to cross them down. So respectively, first what we're going to do is bring each uh, allele into its respective box, all right? And we'll bring the big G down. We'll bring little G down. We'll bring big G, uh, little G across and little G across. We'll also drop big G here, little G here. Same thing. Little G, little G comes down. All right. Now we end up with 50, 50 probability, right? 50 percent because we got two 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 phenotypes we got big g little g and little g little g right those are our probabilities 50 percent chance that those phenotypes are going to come out in that direction let's take a look at a, another cross all right so we got a new giveaway coming up new giveaway coming up if you want to participate this is going to be an easy one all you need to do, all you need to do is hit the link in the description, man. Oxen Hill High School has a fundraiser going right now, and it's sponsoring this video, man. So, shout out to Oxen Hill. My daughter, Ariana, is having a fundraiser, and I need your support. So, if you support, hit that link, send me a screenshot. That you support it, you get two packs off the website. Two packs off the website. Your choice. Just hit me in the DM with the screenshot. Let me know which ones and I'll get them out to you, man. Let's say we take big G times big G, little g. All right, let's put the box down here, plant square, big G, little g times big G, little g. We bring big G, little g. Big G, little G, big G, and little G, little G. All right, so this is coming off a little different, right? All right, we got big G, big G. I mean, yeah, big G, big G, big G, little G, big G, little G, and little G, little G. So this this gives us a different ratio here. This gives us a much different ratio. This gives us a one, two to one ratio. Remember, um, last one was one to one. It was just 50-50, one to one ratio. We did big G, little G times uh, uh, little G, little G, and we got a half and half. Here, we crossed a big G little g times a big g little g both heterozygous and the probability change it shifts a bit we end up with a one two to one ratio one two to one one being homozygous dominant one being hetero uh, uh, uh homozygous recessive and two being heterozygous uh so that is a one, two to one ratio, genotype ratio, um, which is 25% homozygous dominant, 25% homozygous recessive, and 50% heterozygous. All right. And moving forward, as far as the pheno typical ratio if we think about the phenotype what was what was our phenotype uh, descriptions in the beginning 
Big G, Little G represented Short Gorilla. And Little G, Little G represented a Tall Gorilla. So in this one, we only have a three to one phenotypical ratio. Only a three to one phenotypic ratio. Last time, we had a one to one, right? Half. This time, we got a three to one. Big G, Big G. The Big G, no matter what, the Big G, no matter what, is always dominant. And that big G still represents a short gorilla. So every time we see a big G, in this case here of the heterozygous case, it's going to mask the recessive uh, allele for tall. That dominant big G is, 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 is represented by the short allele. That's the short allele. And it's always going to mask any recessive. So we have one, two, three. Short and one homozygous recessive for tall, so three to one phenotype ratio and um, genotype ratio is one two to one. All right, so that is plenty square, man. I expect y'all to do your homework, do your homework because I think maybe tomorrow. We get into Hardy and Weinberg equilibrium status. I need y'all to brush up, get ready. You know, we getting into the more advanced, right? We 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 starting to take some of the things we learned in the previous videos, and and add them, you know, add them to the arsenal, bring them to the table, and make them make sense so that we can utilize them uh, during the selection process. But good job today, guys, man. You good job in class, man. I like that. I like those spit balls was flown. You feel me? I like that. Hit that like button, man. On Hustus. Hit that like button. Shout out to the bros. Shout out to the ladies. Shout out to all my supporters. Shout out to Team Zaza Season 3, Season 4. Shout out to the kick, kick, gang, man. You know what time it is. Hey, much love, man. I appreciate y'all. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Treat people how you want to be treated. A little bit of empathy goes a long way, man. Until we meet again, man, much love, man. Hit that comment section. Run it up. Let me know what y'all want to see next. And don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't. Make sure that you subscribe. That notification bell is going to remind you so that every time I drop a banger, you won't miss out, gang. I appreciate the support, man. Thank you for all the love in the comments. I see y'all. I'm out of here.